Uh, I have a few written notes, and the first thing I'll do is ignore them totally, and that's a good sign because the things I have to say were superseded or uh, uh, totally uh, made redundant by what I've heard here today. The one thing I will not skip on the notes is the thank yous. I share and I join Peter in all the thank yous, and I add one which he comes to himself out of modesty, which I thank Beth and I for all the good work, and this partnership that you just praised and that, that apparently is very inspiring for everybody who go on for a number of years provided produces results like every, everything in, in business life. So, apart from this length thing, uh, I think you all wonder, some of you may wonder, some of, some of you may have already had the answer, why should tourism be such an important thing for entrepreneurship? Um, not just because it's growing or it's a glamorous sector, but there are two things going on in the world which are totally what in Portuguese, in Portuguese we call the cara do turismo. It's the face of tourism that's happening around the world. Mobility and social media. Mobility by nature, if you travel, you're mobile. And increasingly, you travel because you've heard something, uh, recommendations, and then you share the things that you've lived on your travel. So social media and mobility totally at the core of what's happening in the world as a whole, and in tourism in particular. So there must be hundreds, thousands of ideas and opportunities based at least on these two trends, probably some others. But we need something more. Innovation as a necessary tool for any industry, we need something more. The three things I want to talk about here very quickly are creativity, the wise use of technology, and uh, the third one I'll remember in a moment. <laughs> I do need my notes. Ah, it's just resilience, of course. Now, creativity, very simple, the, the idea is very simple, not just because we need new things in tourism, but because the new things that we need in tourism that, that are valuable are going to be so rare that we need hundreds or thousands of new ideas to get to those five or 10 or 20 which are actually valuable. So what, what we're trying to do here, I confess, is to raise up a lot of ideas, to, let, you know, to sort of lift the spirit of everybody trying to focus their creative energies on tourism so that hopefully in one year's time, in two years' time, out of the number, hopefully very large number of ideas that we can provoke and inspire, a few of them will succeed, succeed in such a way that increase tourism as industry worldwide and from my personal and very selfish perspective increase the number of tourists or travelers so mm -hmm. in Portugal. Okay? So innovation and the creative use of this type of, uh, of, of instrument is only helpful if it produces business uh, ideas and, and, and results again. Uh, and for, to do that we need numbers, we want then technology. Technology, all of you are already aware that it's dangerous to use technology as an end in itself, so it's a tool. It's enabling us to do a lot of things we weren't able to do in the past, also in the tourism sector, but we, it's a tool. So use technology wisely. Use, as we have heard many examples here today, technology as a different way, as a new way, as a more powerful way to get to the consumer. To get to him as a promotion or as a, a, a selling device, but also as a way of finding out what are the real travel motivations or the real, um, the real value that is created when people travel and then share their experience. So use technology wisely. And thirdly, resilience. Um, the quote that I like to use on these occasions comes from Samuel Beckett, which says, when you fail, try again, then fail again, then fail better than the first time. So it's going to be a hard work. Somebody mentioned this here today. It's going to be hard work. It's going to be hard knocks. You have to have that energy and the resilience that we need to have in this industry is probably larger than uh, in other sectors because there is so much that we need to do which has never been done before, namely in the globalization of tourist activity. Being a global industry, tourism was never managed globally. globally. Tourist, tourism was never managed globally because of language, because of distance, because of specificities. The reasons are many, but there was never a global approach to tourism. Now, if we're building it the other way, starting from a local perspective with, with, with an idea, with a startup, and trying to scale it up to global level, the importance of being able to overcome all these obstacles that were never there in the past is even larger than that it was. So there are these three things we all need to have. What does tourism Portugal want to do with you? With you and other people like you and other people in the sector? Four very simple things. First, we want to, and this is a a local problem, but I share it with you all the same. We need to change 
or to institute, to promote, to develop and strengthen the entrepreneurial culture in all of our society. From the government downwards, to accelerators like yourselves, to investors, to uh, startups themselves. We establish after the schools that we manage, to the schools in which we have, um, in which we have uh, agreements with and protocols with, we have to change the way people look at the touristic activity. The importance of entrepreneurship within that activity has to be central. The second thing we want to do, and we're doing it here precisely, is mentoring you, giving you, giving you some concrete and um, valuable information on why your business model may or may not be the most adequate. <coughs> how to find you, how to bring the consumer, uh, uh, consumer, be the final consumer or the middle consumer. B2C or B2B models are, are, are just as valuable in this industry. But why should a business model be fine-tuned and how can we help you um, think of a, of a business model which is, has more chances of winning? Thirdly, and probably most importantly for some of you, financing and funding. From our own money and our own ability to decide, to the money we can bring from uh, public and private <coughs> investors in our ecosystem and in our region, because we are in connection, uh, as we've seen today, with a number of European and international investors as well. And finally, the fourth thing I would like to, to, help to be able to do, and it's probably, I'm just talking about dreams and pushing the dates of dreams, I will not push this date. I would like Lisbon to become, over time, starting with this type of events, the real startup hub at least of Europe. There is no reason why this country, with this um, uh, history of uh, working tourism, with this ecosystem that we're building, shouldn't be, in a few years' time, the startup hub. Perhaps uh, following Vincent's uh, uh, suggestion that the vertical specialization is one of the ways of winning, perhaps this movement could be the tourism startup hub of Europe. One final note. Uh, some people think that when you sponsor events like this or you come up and do the closing that you are leading the movement or we are not doing nothing of the sort. You are leading the movement and what I wish is that you become, <coughs> who was using the expression pain in the neck? It was Gloria, right? You should become the real pain in the neck for us. You should force us to evolve, to change our structure in the organization to respond to you in a way that you really need. Be it mentoring or financing or just changing opinions or putting you in contact with people with uh, similar problems with yours be what it may. Force us to change. Force us to evolve. Okay? If you do that, you are leading the process and we are glad for you. And for that effort, of, of effort of obliging us to change, I want to leave you here in advance a big day. Good work.